Welcome again. Today we continue our journey through the IB Environmental Systems and Societies syllabus and we will be stopping at topics 2.6.5 to describe the concept and process of succession in a named habitat. 2.6.6 to explain the changes in energy flow, gross and net productivity, diversity and mineral cycling in the different stages of succession and 2.6.7 describe factors affecting the nature of climax communities a mound of sand this mound was sitting in this spot for about one month in a tropical climate during the rainy season and within that one month this is what began to grow on it. The sand was quarried from an area in the mountains and it had no vegetation growing on that sand so therefore there was no life whatsoever on this sand and it was brought here and within about 30 days we notice that there's a lot of moss collecting on the ends of it. There's some worms burrowing through, as you can see here. And we have several types of grasses. This one, a runner, another type of grass here. And we can see a variety of species beginning to set up shop, as it were, on this brand new environment. These we refer to as pioneers. And this process of something getting established in an area that never had life before is referred to as primary succession. This as opposed to another situation where life might have existed before and then may have been destroyed entirely or partially by something like a fire and then new life arising. That situation would be termed secondary succession. Let's consider one more example. We have the rooftop of a building. It sits in a tropical climate once again and when the rains come a mixture of dust and rainwater it has to drain out this way to the lowest point on the building top before making its way down through an exit which is not visible but right below this area here. What's happened in a period of about five or six months is that a lot of the airborne sand and soil washed away by the rain and also some of the concrete surface eroded by the rain all of that particulate matter began to collect it didn't take long before some depth was established. First, when the depth was not very deep, we had small tiny plants like these establishing themselves. And it's interesting that this area is a little bit more shallow than this area here on the inside. And the shallow areas provide place for small grasses to grow. And where it's deep enough, this population of shrubs which are actually not just a population of one thing but it's a small community of shrubs as you can see two distinct species of substantial size growing and if we can go beneath this area here we will see lots of other types of grasses so several populations establishing a small community and soil developing on man-made concrete, bare rock as it were, giving rise to soil and then to the establishment of a small community. This too would have to be considered an example of primary succession. Life becoming established in an area that did not harbor life before. If however the 
owners and keepers of this building decided to uproot all of those trees and to sweep the building top and then within a short time life returned that would be described as secondary succession so two types of succession if life establishes itself in a place that never harbored life before usually bare rock and where life can get established where there's some soil and perhaps seeds remaining or roots that is a case of secondary succession our syllabus defines succession as the orderly process of change over time in a community a community like this right here perhaps changes in the community of organisms frequently cause changes in the physical environment that allow other organisms in the community to become established for instance the very first plants to begin growing in this small community were able to establish their roots and they were able to help build up the soil by preventing the runoff of the rainwater from this rooftop and that in turn built up a soil depth that was sufficient to establish more organisms in the community so this brought about a change in the conditions in the soil and that allowed another community to become established or more organisms to become established within this community eventually these larger shrubs would outcompete the grasses so often but not inevitably the later communities in such a sequence or seri are more complex than those that appear earlier and here we can see it albeit a very simple example here we can see that small grasses are being replaced by bigger shrubs and this sequence or siri is what we term succession this orderly process of change from simple to more complicated let's consider now a specific example in more detail beginning from bare rock rock that harbors no life whatsoever rock that may have arisen out of a volcano from the ocean forming a new island rock that might be formed as a result of an on land volcanic eruption this bare rock provides a place for organisms like these lichens and mosses to establish themselves these are the typical pioneers of the bare rock these pioneers work together with the forces of weathering abiotic factors in the environment the lichens produce acids which gradually eat into bare rock this together with the alternate heating and cooling as seasons change as the wind blows and weathering happens and rainfall comes and seeps in the cracks bare rock gets worn down soil begins to collect from the wind and from other places eventually ferns begin to grow in cracks on rocks and the bare rock becomes a small community as time goes by roots become deeper the cracks in rocks become deeper and more soil collects within a period of time that's dependent upon the biotic and abiotic conditions a period that can be anywhere from a few months in a simple micro situation to tens sometimes hundreds of years eventually leads to this primary growth young forest herbaceous plants and young trees biodiversity begins to increase animals begin to enter this community small mammals and birds and invertebrates 
and trees begin to cover the ground and change the forest floor. The soil depth begins to become a lot more significant than just lichens and ferns growing on bare rock. Eventually, the trees become older, the canopy becomes higher, and life becomes even more complicated. We end up with the climax community, a community that's not growing as much, not photosynthesizing as much as the earlier community, one that's established and full of biodiversity of all kinds. Biomass is increased. Species diversity is increased. The soil is deeper and richer. Taller, longer living plants. More animals that take care of their young, like foxes and bears. More complex and stable community made up of more complicated food webs where organisms don't depend upon one single source of food and a community that's very much in a steady state equilibrium not undergoing too much change but just having some small fluctuations that might occur due to seasonal changes this is the nature of the climax community lichens growing on bare rock Together with the abiotic factors, lichens eventually work their way into the rock, creating a small platform of soil that allows ferns to become established. This process eventually leads to an even thicker, richer soil that allows trees and other plants to establish themselves. These trees take a long time, sometimes over a hundred years, to eventually give rise to the climax community. Perhaps the most significant issue in this section relates to this diagram. What we have here in this diagram is this being the bare rock stage here, the lichens, and this being the early establishment of the community. At that point, gross productivity is very high and respiration is very low and if you recall that NPP the net productivity is equal to gross productivity minus respiration we're able to get this difference right here being equal to the net increase in biomass and this net increase becomes more significant as the community becomes more and more established. Eventually reaching its peak when you start having young trees growing. But eventually those young trees become older. And as they become older, they don't increase that much in biomass. And the gross productivity begins to decline. With this decline in the gross productivity, which is basically the rate of the process of photosynthesis, the overall net increase in biomass begins to decline. And when we have a fully established climax community, like we have in this part of the graph here, at that point, the photosynthesis to respiration ratio photosynthesis as shown by the gross productivity and respiration is shown here photosynthesis to respiration ratio equals exactly one in the climax community which means there is no real increase in biomass and you also notice that biodiversity reaches a peak at that point and soil depth reaches a peak at that point and it's for all of these reasons that we term this stage of succession the climax stage but technically the period of most growth is the stage just before the climax stage when you have a young forest growing 
That's the force that's taking more carbon dioxide out of the air and locking it away in more plant tissue. That's the forest that's acting as a better sink for taking up carbon dioxide out of the air. This stage right here. In the climax community, the photosynthesis to respiration ratio becomes one. Consider for a moment now, what would happen if our climax community were affected by human intervention? Then we would have something referred to as plagioclimax. Climatic and soil or edaphic factors determine the nature of a climax community. Human factors frequently affect this process through, for example, fire, agriculture, grazing, and habitat destruction. And this habitat destruction leads to an erosion or a deterioration in some of the good qualities of the climax community. For instance, the soil quality deteriorates as a result of human intervention. Species diversity deteriorates. The complex and stable community that you had becomes less. And number of negative effects occur as a result of this human intervention referred to as plagioclimax. It's important to establish the difference between the succession that we discussed and another term which is sometimes confused with succession and that's the term zonation. The arrangement or patterning of plant communities or ecosystems into parallel or sub-parallel bands in response to change over distance. Here we're using a transect, something we will discuss in the next section to study zonation on this very mountainside. And you would see that we are looking at everything that occurs as we traverse the length of the mountain moving from the bottom all the way up to the top. So there are no questions associated with today's lesson but it's important for you to go to these two URL. While it's acceptable to describe succession in the way we did during this lesson as organisms changing in diversity and colonizing bare rock like this massive bare rock in the middle of the ocean being colonized by plants for the first time and we call that primary succession and telling the story with the graph it's very very important to make reference to some real life example and these two uh, URLs would certainly give you that and satisfy this examiner's 